everybody, this is Christine Bertram, and I'm coming to you live from the Hive here in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. And we are going to be making some fun fold cards tonight. <laughs> There's four of them, and they are pretty intensive, you guys. <laughs> so, um, I hope you're up for a challenge, you guys. Um, I realized that I left my class sign-up sheets over on the table, so I will have to grab them in a second here. But, oh, here we made it through almost another week. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Penny Powell. Hi, Kathy Groves. You guys w wouldn't believe it, but I had, for the cutest Halloween class last week, I had eight sets of cards left going into the class. And by Sunday, they were all gone, you guys. So you must have liked those Halloween cards. <laughs> so hi, Luann Johnson. So it's always a good idea, you guys. Um, I just want to send a little reminder. Hi, Marianne. Um, if you guys are interested in one of my classes and taking them, always check with me as it gets closer to the date of signing up. Um, hi, Karen. Hi, Debbie. Good evening to you as well. Hi, Sandy Wicklinder. You know, as it gets closer to the RSVP date, um, hi, Sherry. Uh, sometimes I run out of kits, you guys. I make a certain number of kits, and I always hate turning people down or having to refund money, but it happens from time to time. Uh, and I'm saying this because somebody tried to... Um, or signed up for a class for the cutest Halloween. I have no kids left. So I always have a date in the event. Hi, Ellen. Hi, Janet. Hi, Lisa. I always have a date in the event that is a week prior to the class. And hi, Lynn Beasley. Hi, Brenda Wood. Hi, Pat. Hi, Ann. <laughs> hi, Deb. Hi, Stacy. Um, so you always want to check with me at least a week prior to class to make sure I still have kits before you pay for the class or sign up for the class or place an order to try to get that class for free um, because sometimes I do run out and I hate to disappoint anybody. So if, hi Susan, hi Faye. Um, so if there is a class that you're looking to get and it is after the RSVP date or if it's even after the class, you always want to check with me first because you guys, I generally don't have kits left um, in the last few weeks or last few classes I have had, but they're always gone. By the end of class, um, <laughs> or by like the two days after they're gone. So it's always good to check with me. And I just want to remind everybody of that. So, and it's your first class. Yay. Woohoo. So I always try to make sure that everybody's happy. <laughs> and I know that if you want to take a class and I don't have any kids left that you can't take it, that you're not necessarily going to be happy. <laughs> so hi, Jean Maxwell. So just a little reminder to always check those dates and then to always check with me as the class approaches. And you guys, Oh, for this class, the fun folds, you're not going to believe it, but I have 74 people signed up. Hi, Kathy Jackson from Iola, Wisconsin. 74, you guys. When I originally forecasted this class, I had 64 is what I had in my head. And when I worked on preparations and kidding, we prepped for 64. And then when I finally counted, oh my gosh. Hi, Mitzi. Um, it's good. Good to see you too. <laughs> or I should say hear from you. Um, as I was Going through the class list, I thought, oh no, I have 69 people signed up. So I did make um, more kits for this class, but I knew that a week ago already because the RSVP date was a week early and that gave me time to still prep. Um, so yeah, 74 people, you guys. This is probably one of my biggest classes ever. Hi, Sharon. Good to see you again. Wow, yes, you did these fun folds last night. So now you get to see behind the scenes on how I put them together. Hi, Deanne. Woohoo! So I wanted to share with you guys, though, I believe that I have almost all of November ready, and I will be doing a separate video showcasing the cards for November, but I wanted to share them with you guys because, woohoo! I got them done. Hi, Kelly Bird. Um, hi, Jeannie, uh, Jean Terwilliger. <laughs> I got you right. Um, I'm not freezing, Deb. So I am freezing, but I'm not freezing <laughs> in the sense of internet freezing. I'm freezing. I don't know if you guys can see I'm a little bit shaking because it's cold in here. Oh my gosh. The hive is a little bit cold and um, the heat is hard to um, facilitate. Hi, Jennifer. Because, hi, Julie. Uh, because it's in-floor heating and um, if I have 10 women in here, it helps keep me warm. But when I'm in here all by myself, I get cold. So I didn't want to put a jacket on for the live, but I have a sweater on my lap. <laughs> so hi, Vanessa. Oh, Vanessa, you get to watch because you're coming to class on Friday. And now you'll see behind the scenes. It's like uh, peeking underneath the skirt, you guys. You get to see how I put the cards together. So 
Um, uh, so, um, yes, I've been freezing. So you guys, I don't know what you're doing with the freezing, but like you can see here, like I haven't been freezing. So I'm continuously going, hi, Debbie Schultz. So, woohoo. Okay. So, um, I want to show you guys some upcoming classes. Oh, did you see the sneak peek here? If you guys didn't catch it, Kelly's on her A game. <laughs> she and I worked on the mystery card last week and she's already got clue one ready. So if you want to take a screenshot of this, you can. Otherwise, you can always find it at cardsbychrisb.com or on Facebook at Cards by Christine. You have to go to the date though. I believe mystery card night, you guys, is the 15th of November. So you need to go to the events calendar um, and check out clue one. So that's ready for you, okay? And to show you a little bit of what's coming up. All right. This one is full, you guys. So don't try to pay for this one. It is plum full. I don't have any kits left. But this is what we're working on next week for ink, paper, scissors. It's featuring the Whimsy and Wonder bundle and suite of products. So that one is coming up next week. And then we're gonna roll right into this, guys. If you wanna sign up for any of these, they're all open right now to sign up for. This is the monthly class for November. And I'm gonna breeze through these a little bit because I'm gonna do another video specifically on these. But this one, you just need a sentiment. And then, um, yes, Deb, I will be ordering the little calendars again. So watch for, um, if you wanna send me an email with how many you want, um, go ahead and do that, okay? And then this one, you guys, you don't even need a sentiment on the outside. So that's the monthly class for November. Oh, Hill and Elle, I'm glad you got your kit already. That's awesome. This one is a fee-based class or it's free with a minimum $35 order for shipping. You guys, this one's called Tidings and Trimmings. It's the 14th of November and it features Tidings and Trimmings. <laughs> and so we got four Christmas, uh, three Christmas cards. That one also is uh, fee-based, so you could pay the fee or you could get them free with a $35 order. Hi, Anna Rebidoux. You guys, this is the Painted Christmas. This class will sell out. Um, I highly recommend signing up sooner rather than later for this one. Uh, and plus with Christmas in here, I'm gonna try to do, like Christmas is coming up, so shipping has gotten delayed. You guys, did you notice that as soon as they said that the shipping is gonna slow down, it did. It's like they heard the news people say that. And so, uh, I'm going to try to start getting kits out a little bit earlier than a week in advance. And so this is the painted Christmas. This is a fun fold. It opens this way and then opens that way. And then we got this diagonal pattern going on with this one. And I love the pine cones on this and also on this one. So this one, you guys, is called Painted Christmas. It's the featured sweet bundle for the month of November. If you're in my VIP club, you'll have the option or abil ability to get the bundle at half off by sharing that specific video. It's also a fee-based or free with a minimum $40 order. Hi, Susie Stocks. You guys, I have a, a stamp of stock in November. It's online, I think, on the 19th, um, in person on the 20th. It's making 16 cards. And so this is just a fee-based class. So you can pay the fee. It includes product. So it includes some paper and embellishments and the ribbon. So that one is on November 19th. All these you guys can find on my events calendar. And then, you guys, I just got these done last night. <laughs> I'm so excited. The gingerbread is the ink paper sizzy, scissors. I saw Susie and I was going to say sizzies. <laughs> um, for the ink paper scissors for November is this frosted gingerbread. So these are the four cards. You guys, <laughs> it's so easy. Hi, Sandy. Nothing on here is really stamped except for sentiments. I did it again. I don't know why I do that, but the paper is so awesome. All of these little things are paper. So you're just going to have to cut out or die cut your own little um, little stars and your cookies. But you just need sentiments, you guys. Stamp a stack, Anna, is um, you're going to make four of each of these cards. So you're stamping a stack of Christmas cards. Uh, for in-person, it's $50. Mailed is for $59. It includes a pack of designer paper, envelopes, the rhinestones, and the ribbon. So it's a product-based class, so it's not free with a purchase. But you'll make all of these and times four. So you'll make 16 of these cards. So if you need help with your Christmas cards, you guys, this would be a good class. So minimal stamping as well. You just need sentiments to complete these cards. Nothing crazy. Okay? So... That's what we've got coming up in November, you guys. Oh my gosh. And so this ink, paper, scissors is in November, but it was the October ink, paper, scissors. So look at all these cards. We're going to be making all of these over the next Thursday nights with you guys. 
all through November. So um, on a note too, you guys, I mentioned about the mail. Just know that I'm going to try to work ahead with my mom and Anna and Pat on getting all of these cards kitted up earlier in the process than normal. So versus a week ahead, we might try to get them two weeks ahead. And if that's the case, I can mail them out sooner to you so that they don't get caught in the postal service system. Last year, I remember I mailed out the December cards the first week of December and some people it took up to two weeks to get them and they missed them for a class. So, hi Jeannie Parker, thanks for sharing. So knowing that you guys, it would be best to sign up for classes ahead of time so that if I have them kitted and ready early, I could get them out to you sooner, okay? So I'll work on that if you sign up sooner. <laughs> so, okay. So again, I'm gonna do a special video showcasing them, maybe when it's a little bit warmer in here and I'm not shivering. <laughs> so, all right. Um, I do wanna show you guys some happy mail that I got. I love sharing what I get in the mail with you. So, um, uh, perfect, Vanessa. You just let me know um, tomorrow when you come to class. That's perfect. Um, I have limited spots at some, uh, like the stamp a stack um, because I have to pre-order the paper and I got to make sure it's all in stock. So, okay. This one came from Julie Frost um, featuring the Expressions in Ink uh, designer paper. Um, yeah, I don't know if that's Expressions in Ink though. <laughs> I can't remember you guys. Um, painted texture embossing folder though at the top. Very pretty. You guys, I got my first Christmas card. Woo! -hoo! This one came from Sue Sorrell <laughs> using some of the gingerbread designer paper here. Um, and she never got it. It's been two months, Debbie. I know that mail gets so stuck sometimes. Um, I bet you it still shows up. <laughs> this is some of the designer paper from Celebration, stitched so sweetly dies. And then I got my first Christmas card. <laughs> I love it. Thanks, Sue. This one was pretty too. This came from Pat Gallings. Look at this. She used the memories and more from the hand pen. And this is the, I think the color and contour stamp with the die here and then the genial gems and then the hand pen designer paper and look she wrote a thank you she wrote thanks christina <laughs> and that came from pat all right this one came from i believe elaine no mo mo sent this so i got the other one came first and then mo's card came second and it's not really a christmas card though it says nobody likes you as much as me and so it's a wintry card and this came from mo so um, she doesn't really want snow yet, maybe on Christmas Eve. <laughs> so thank you, Mo, for that card. This one came from Bonnie Kelly. Look how she did her fold. And then she's got a nice little stamp in here that says you're one in a million. And this paper, I loved it. I can't remember. It was from like two years ago, but the stitched rectangle dies. I love the fold, how it just changes it up when you have a, a, a slice through the middle somewhere else. <laughs> so this one came from Elaine Reback. It was her Christmas card. You guys, she used the black cat with the shimmery black paper. So cool. And the pumpkin set from a couple of years ago. And then she's got a little sticker in here that says, I love candy. So very pretty, Elaine. This one came from Penny Powell. Less trick and more treating. And she used that festive and bright um, hat set on the side here. And then the gingham ribbon. You guys, you know, you can color the black and white gingham ribbon. You can add color to it. So cool. And then she used some of the cute Halloween paper. And if you've got it, <laughs> it says haunt it. <laughs> Very cute, Penny. So this one came from Kay Warren. We did a retro swap party last week, and she sent this as a thank you card. I love, love, love how beautiful this is. Um, it's in the piece set. Um, I don't know if what you were wearing for, for if the piece. No, it's in the piece set. I'm not sure, Penny, what, if you were talking about your card or a different one. Um, Laura. So you want the painted Christmas. So Laura, I will add your name to the painted Christmas on the 18th. Okay, I'll put your name on there. We can always figure out fee or order as you figure it out. Um, <clears throat> on this one, you guys, just so like st stunning but simple. Like if you need to make swap cards, this is a perfect card. Like you, your, your designer paper is showcased with a little thin layer. The background is embossed with the subtle embossing folder, if I'm not mistaken. Some ribbon and then three layers of circles and then some genial gems. Oh, so pretty. So pretty. I love this one. Pretty blue is in the peach. The pretty blue is in the peach. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> so, and then last but not certainly, and certainly not least, is Jean Terwilliger. She made me this one and sent this in. Um, 
the retro swap as well. Um, so Deb and Penny Powell, I'll make sure to get you guys signed up for the 1118 class. Lynn Beasley, do you need to have the die for the joy? No, you don't. Um, you guys, whenever anything um, is die cut or embossed, unless potentially it needs stamping first, then I will do that. So like in this case, wait, um, the card is here. In this case, you guys, all the die cutting is done. Anna's already done it, actually. <laughs> I'm planning for a certain number, and when I reach, reach that one, it's done. So, like, Anna's already die cut the bow and the green ornament and the joy. So, that's done. And the embossing is done. Like, in this case, the embossing will be done. All the trees will be cut. But your little fox here, you guys, you're going to get a, a piece from me because you're going to need to stamp and then either fussy cut it or die cut it, or maybe you won't even put your fox on there. So for the most part, everything is die cut. Like here, this is going to be die cut for you and already embossed. You will need to stamp a sentiment. So anything you see that's generally die cut and embossed, I do for you. Hi, Pam Newhauser. Hi, Sarah. Um, I did see here that Jeannie Parker, I caught that Jeannie that you wanted to take the um, painted Christmas class as well. And Hilda Nell, then that should have answered your question as well. Okay. So, hi, Karen Drain from Erie, Michigan. Back to Jean's card here, though. <laughs> I wasn't quite done. Um, then this is her inside. She's got a couple of little butterflies on the inside. Jean, I loved your card. It's very pretty. Hi, Mary Carls. The colors are very soft and soothing. So, all right. So that's a little bit of the love that I've gotten. Um, Hilda Nell, though, you want to be signed up for, I think, the uh, monthly class. You're going to have to confirm with me um, that you want this class right here because that's where you were asking about that um yes barbara gabby that would be really good if you want to go online tomorrow you guys you can also go online or send me emails text um to sign up like me on post-it notes during class is a little hard but <laughs> i try my best to make sure i get all my chicken scratch figured out afterwards so um, yep. Okay, Hilda, I have you down for the monthly class. I have that written down. So you guys, thank you so much for all this happy mail. I love to share it with you guys so that you can enjoy it as well. At the end of class, I do have these seven cards that these are from the cutest Halloween. These are what we made last week. And then the week before you guys, I have these. I got some winners drawn for those cards. So we'll give those away later. But for now, I think I'm going to flip this down. We're going to look at the first card we're going to make at <laughs> you guys. I'm going to go get the sign-up sheet real quick. Hang on. You guys, this is by far, I think, one of my biggest online classes. 46 people have signed up, are signed up for this right now. There won't be any more than 46, you guys, because I am out of kits. So don't ask me, <laughs> please don't ask me because I'll have to tell you no. And I hate saying no. Um, so we have 46 people. So roll call is gonna be a little bit longer than normal, you guys. <laughs> Double last week, actually. So, oh man. <laughs> so are we ready, you guys? And if you're here, you can shout out and say hi, you're here. Um, this is awesome, you guys. So Sandy Wicklander, and usually, you guys, I, I announce in the order that you've signed up. So Sandy Wicklander, you're always first. <laughs> well, I would say most of the time you're always first. Hi, Denise. All right, Lisa Lewis, um, Leslie McMinn, uh, Deanne Estelle Barbarco, um, Feline Mays, Ellen Brover, Susan Reed, Patricia Settle, Latokia Trigg, Cheryl Thomas, Gwen Pretoshek, Mo Stites, Barbara Johnson, Donna Dresp, Susan Risch, Ruth Nicholson, Luann Johnson, Brenda Wood, Jeannie Parker, Barbara Godby, Anne De Aquisto. <laughs> that one's hard for me. <laughs> Lynn Beasley, Naomi Worrell, Lila Erickson, Jennifer Jones, Kathy Grove, Penny Powell, Laura Sullivan, Colleen Anaker, Kathy Jackson, um, Linda Hodge, Deb Norman. You guys, I ran out of space and I had to go to the back of this. Kelly Bird, Carmen Melendez, Judy Kruger, Angela Knutson, Mary Carls, Pam Newhauser, Julie Frost, Cindy Miller, Faye Gabby, Stacey Burns, Mary Ostrich, Janet Wright, and Tammy Steckling. <laughs> Woohoo! We made it through the list. Oh my gosh, you guys. That was 46 people. I'm completely amazed and astonished. 
And thank you for your support, you guys. I couldn't do what I love to do if you didn't take my classes. <laughs> so I appreciate that you guys take my classes. Um, and I have a note to make to you guys that this is a lot of paper to cut. I don't know. I like it might have been because my big paper cutter is out of commission. I actually had a technician over today. Oh, and he fixed it. <laughs> so now I can go back to cutting like this much paper at one time. All of these kits, you guys, everything was cut piece by piece, one piece at a time. And I wanted to cry some nights because I was up from like 11 until 2 a.m. cutting paper for this class last week. And I'm like, I hate cutting paper and I never think that. <laughs> so, so I made it through you guys. I probably spent 15 to 20 hours cutting paper for this specific class. And Anna spent a lot of hours die cutting pieces and Pat spent hours die cutting and embossing pieces. And my mom spent hours kidding up. And this class was, I have to say a labor of love. It was love. And so I hope that you guys love these cards and enjoy putting them together and you um, don't have lots of missing pieces and parts because <laughs> my mom did her best. <laughs> if anybody's missing anything, please just reach out to me and say, hey, I'm so sorry, I can't find this. Maybe it got missed, maybe it didn't get missed, but I need a piece and I'll happily and gladly send you out a piece. <laughs> That's usually how it works, you guys. My mom tries her best, so um, yeah. So I don't have myself freezing. So <laughs> I'm sorry if you guys are having freezing issues. Um, just know that this class and every class that I ever teach online is available in a replay. After I finish the live, then it goes into a replay in the video section of the Cards by Christine Facebook page. So you guys can always, if you're having issues and it becomes frustrating watching the video live, you can always catch the replay. And I always tell people that while I'm live, I try to read every comment that comes in and answer questions. Um, Joyce is here by accident, but I'm happy that you're here and you take good notes. <laughs> That's good. Um, so if you guys are with me live, I try to catch comments and ask you guys if you have anything and if you need anything. But if you're catching the replay, I don't generally watch and look at every comment that happens after I go live. So if you do have specific questions, it always always best to text me, Facebook message me, email me, and I will um, get back to you that way. That's how it's like always best. So, okay. Hi, Kay. So on that note, are you guys ready <laughs> to make some fun folds? Okay, you guys, we started class last night in person with a room full here. It was full. And we went at six o'clock, we started. And, um, oh, you're very welcome, Debbie. Uh, don't feel like an outsider because, yeah, exactly, because you don't have all the embossing folders and, and dies because I do all that. that like, or I should say Anna helps me with all that. So, um, But we got done by 9 o'clock. The last person finished at 9, so it was a three-hour long class. And, you know, for tonight, you guys, I'm not sure if I'll finish at 8 or if it'll be at 8.30. But no, if it gets long to you and you need to take a bathroom break, take me to the bathroom with you. <laughs> I promise I won't take you to the bathroom with me if I have to go. So, okay. So we're going to start with the fun fold that is called a pinwheel card. You guys, this was the hottest craze that happened over the summer, I think. And Anna, not Anna, you always know, started it. Sorry, Anna and Carissa. Carissa did this card um, for the summer creative escape that I hosted here in the Hive in early August. And so I cased her card. I asked her to do a, a pinwheel card. I keep calling them spinner, you guys. So if you hear me say spinner in the next hour, I mean pinwheel. <laughs> I'm trying to not say spinner, but to me it spins around and like, cause you keep spinning it around, even though I know it's not a spinner card. So I want to show you guys the card that Carissa made and show you how she did it with the whimsy and wonder paper. Her main thing that she taught me was that the papers kind of all got to coordinate as you flip it around. And so this was the card and this was a spot for you to write a sentiment. So this is the card that I, I had Carissa, she did, um, did, had presented, presented this or demonstrated this. And so she sat with me and taught me what I need to do. <laughs> so this is the card that we're making for class. It features the heartwarming hug paper, heartwarming hugs paper, um, the tidings and trimming stamp set, some red and green foil paper, um, some of the red sheer ribbon, and every time you flip it, you have to make sure that these patterns match. This was by far the hardest part of this class was figuring out your patterns. 
And um, yeah, I know I've pieced things together on this. <laughs> and this is actually Evergreen Elegance. So you guys, when you pull out your kits for this card, there are lots of pieces. And you're going to feel overwhelmed when you pull out all the parts. And I want to assure you that we're going to go step by step and make sure you get this put together just perfectly fine. This is the Evergreen Forest embossing folder on the the gar um, the green foil. So you guys, in your kit, you'll have your red ribbon and you'll also have some of the red rhinestones. I think I put nine red rhinestones in every one or my mom did, one of us did. <laughs> so, all right. Pieces, you guys. <laughs> Pieces. I'm Marsha. Oh, man, you guys. This was a lot. And I want to show you. I did not score mine because I want to show you how you can make this on your own. Everybody who signed up for this class was emailed. I believe everybody. Who was the last person? Tammy Steckling. I think I owe you this email. Um, Stacy, Mary, I Mary, I got her. Stacy and Janet, I think I also owe you this PDF tutorial. By taking the class, by signing up and paying for class, um, I email you the PDF tutorial. Hopefully you guys get it. I know that sometimes you guys don't always get my emails if they go into your spam folder. So you always want to look in your spam folder to see if you got it there. But you guys, you start with a sheet of eight and a half by 11. And I want to teach you this so that you know how to do it when you're at home without me doing it for you. <laughs> so Chris is, her advice was, you have, this is a uh, four and a quarter by five and three quarters, right? So that fits right here. And then you have what's left two and three quarters by four and a quarter. So that is one length. So what you do is you cut your white paper at four and a quarter and then you cut it at five and three quarters or two and three quarters. Either way, that gives you these two pieces right here. Then what's next is you need two more of these white panels. These white panels are two and three quarters by four and a quarter. Well, four and a quarter and four and a quarter is eight and a half. So look at this, you guys. Your next row here is the two other, makes up the two other panels. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So once you, and then you even have enough left over here, if you're going to make a second or a third card, you even have enough left over, not for that, but you could have two more panels there. Or you could use this extra piece for, um, like for this part or this, um, the label that's on there. Okay. So I wanted to go over that with you guys to show you that. So that's how you have three panels that are four and a quarter by two and three quarter. And then you have this other piece. Now, what are you gonna do with this other piece? I already, I already embalmed, I already scored it for you, right? So, but I didn't score mine because I wanna show you how to score it. So let me get my scoring tool out here. In a second here, I will have it. As long as I don't drop everything. So, I have my scoring tool here and Hi, Cheryl Thomas. No problem. You're late. I don't mind. <laughs> Glad you're here with us. So you're going to score. So you guys, the first one is at two and three quarters, and then it's every three quarter inch. So three and a half, four and a quarter, and five. Okay. So you start at two and three quarters and you go every three quarter inch and you have four sections of strips here and then you have a this true it's a two and three quarter inch panel okay that's how I got yours done okay <clears throat> so first things first what we did in class last night is we got our stamping done and so let's put our stamping hat on and we're going to stamp these two things and then also one of these panels okay ink is cherry cobbler we use shaded spruce. Oh, I'm glad you like them, Barb. <laughs> Diane likes them too. Woohoo! So the stamp set that I pulled in for this is Evergreen Elegance, is where the tree came from, and then Tidings and Trimmings is where I pulled in one, two, three sentiments. These three sentiments. The snow hill that we're going to use also comes from this set. So that's what we're going to be working on, and we're going to get all that stuff stamped first. So I have some photopolymer stamps here. So I'm going to find my piercing mat down here. And we're going to stamp those things first. And they are in the cherry cobbler. So first things, I got to remind you guys, 
I had a couple people that stamped this in the center last night. There's a strip of designer paper here. So what you wanna make sure you do is you stamp far enough over so that, oh yeah, Deb, <laughs> you caught me. So <laughs> cherry cobbler, real red, either one works. I'll be completely honest with you. When I designed the cards, I used cherry cobbler. And I was like, huh, this is real red in here and not cherry cobbler. So my ink looked off. So when I wrote in the instructions real red, I'm like, it'll be brighter. And you know what? Maybe we'll do brighter so you can see the difference. This is cherry cobbler. It looks okay. Um, and so what happened in class last night is I pulled out cherry cobbler, even though I told everybody I used real red. You guys, they're very, very close. And we'll use it on tonight Well, so I can show you the difference. It Honestly, either one will be just fine on this card because this card brings in both, it looks like. And this is like in between them. So you use, and it looked fine, right? It looked, I bet it looked really good. So let's see here. <laughs> Cherry cobbler looked a little bit brighter, I think. So you guys remember, we're going to stamp over to the left and you're pretty close to the left over here. Um, just try to get it straight. So look, there's, there's actually not much difference. You guys can't even see it in the camera, but the cherry cobbler is just a hint darker than the real red. Okay. So then we have this one, which is may your days be merry and bright. So this little tag, you guys came from the frightfully frightful tags. That is the Halloween set that we used a couple weeks ago. Um, actually we used it last week a lot. This little tag was the same tag that we used right here on this card from last week. Okay. So we'll give that a second. It was marinating very nicely. And then the last little sentiment is the season's greetings. It's so tiny. This little sentiment is so tiny. It's supposed to fit in that stocking right there. <laughs> that's why I think it's so tiny. Okay. So that's gonna get stamped near, oh, I can't see that. Let's see, right there, close to the top. If it's crooked, flip it over, just redo it. That's better, okay. So that's it for the cherry, oh, real red. <laughs> yeah, I think I like real red. It's all good, they look so close. Then we're gonna stamp our tree. So I originally stamped my tree on my sample and actually evening, evergreen maybe let's see here i did one of them in eve oh yeah here you can see i stamped that one in evening evergreen and it looked really dark so then i changed it to shaded spruce and so i think i put shaded spruce in the instructions because it just looked a little brighter so you're gonna grab your tree and just tap 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 on these foam pads you don't need to use a lot of ink and our tree is gonna go like that so i did the sentiment first and then i'm working my way down and then last week, we're, lastly, we're going to have some snow. So I have dirty snow, you guys. It is gray. <laughs> it's hard to stamp snow otherwise. So let's just grab a little scrap because I'm going to end up going off the edge a little bit. And let's see. That's first strength. And then second strength is a little lighter. You can choose what you want to do. Laura, I emailed your instructions to you. Um, I emailed them, you guys. I don't remember what day it was. Um... Monday of this week. Um, you'll have to check your email, Laura. Um, everybody except for, I had just said, everybody except for Tammy, Janet, and Stacy were emailed their instructions. I forgot Stacy and Tammy and Janet, you guys. I think that I, um, I, I, I forgot. I don't know if I forgot. You were, you, you passed my mark, so I know I didn't do it. So I will make sure to send you guys yours. But hi, Melanie Foyle. So Laura, Check your junk mail, check your inbox. If for some reason you guys don't, here, I gotta tell you guys, if you don't get your instructions from me, they could be in your spam or your junk mail. The other thing that I would recommend doing is send me an email that says test email so that I could just reply to that email and attach the instructions to that or try forwarding. So for some October 20th dubs that I sent them out. So that was last week, Wednesday. Okay, so that's what happened. I sent them all out. So whoever was signed up by October 20th or whoever I had on my list by October 20th, and then the other people I had to write Janet down and Tammy down and um, Stacy. I think you signed up after the 20th. So, okay. So if you guys 
don't get the PDF. Somehow something's being blocked in your email and you got to help me figure out why, because I don't know why you're not getting my emails if I'm sending them to the correct email address. And I want to make sure you get the PDF instructions because it has the pictures, the measurements and all of the how you do it. So um, check Laura in your inbox or your junk mail. Um, and for some reason, just send me an email and I'll try to help you out. Okay. Just my disclaimer on that. Hi, Brenda Little, because I know somebody else was trying to find the PDF and they got frustrated with me and couldn't get it. And I don't know how to help you <laughs> if I have the right email address. I don't know why your email is blocking me from sending the PDF. It could be something with regards to the size of the PDF attachment that your email doesn't allow a certain size or higher. So that could be it. But um, the audio is going faster than the video. Isn't that funny? <laughs> um, that's because I talk really fast, Kathy. <laughs> so, all right, you guys, that's it for stamping on this card. So let's get this stuff put away and we're going to work on assembly. Okay. So first we need to look at this little guy here and you're going to fold on your score lines like this. And then you're going to grab your bone folder and you're going to burnish them, right? So take the bone folder and give them nice crisp edges. And Kathy, you would only see that the audio is going faster than the video because you're probably looking at my mouth talking <laughs> when I flip the camera up. All right, so all of these guys, just like that. Okay, so then this is gonna end up going like this, but I didn't wanna glue it quite yet. I wanna get all my pieces glued. So we're gonna look at the sample here, like this. this is what we did in class yesterday. We looked at the sample and we are gonna start gluing our panels. So when I held this up to here, I could see, okay, well, what's this one? That is this green designer paper. And then you're gonna find this one right here and we're gonna glue that on, okay? So we're going to put a little adhesive on the back of this one. Now, if you guys want to rearrange your patterns, know that you can. But if you do, make sure that everything still looks cohesive when the, um, when the whole card is put together. Okay, so we want to make sure that this gets glued. Now, I'm going to, I'm gluing it to my score line here is what I'm doing. And then what I'm gonna do is take my scissors and trim this off so that it's flush. Oh, I'm still moving. My glue is a little wet yet, so hang on. So you got a little wiggle wiggle room with the liquid glue, you guys. So it might move on you. I'm gonna put that one down here <laughs> because it's really shiny. Hi, Deborah. So this, you can take your scissors and trim this ever so slightly off, okay? Now, that one's first, so I'm gonna wait to attach these things. So we're gonna flip it this way, okay? So now we have this stripy red paper. Okay, so here was my trick. When I designed these cards, I only cut two inches of DSP here. Well, at two inches, you could see some white in some of the cracks here, and I didn't like that. So for you guys, what I did is I cut two and an eighth, and I didn't get as much designer paper out of a pack because if I would have cut it at two, that means I would have gotten six out of a, a column, but because I cut it, um, hi, Pat Mater. Um, if I would have cut it at two, I would have got six, but because I cut it at two and an eighth, I didn't. But then I made sure that you guys would have nice, clean looking cards. Okay, so now that gets glued onto here. So right, so this is what we've got so far, okay? Now that panel is done for right now. So I'm gonna just set that off to the side because now we're starting with our other pieces here. So on the back side of that is the red. So we're gonna grab this polka dot-ish one, <laughs> whatever that is. Now that gets glued on here, okay? And you guys know I like to be a little bit glue happy. And as long as we're looking at that one, I'm just gonna flip this over. I'm gonna adhere both of these pieces to where they need to go. Hi, Pamela Sage. Then this one's gonna go on here. Just try to make sure you line it up good and flush on the outer edge, okay? And this one's gonna go on our shaded spruce piece here. 
and you can set this aside though. We're not gonna work on it. I just wanted to get that glued together. Okay, so we've got this panel done. Now we're gonna flip the card and what's on the back? Okay, we have the red piece, but before I put that on, if you guys, if I had the DSPs a little bit higher than your white panel, you can go ahead and trim that, it's okay. All right, then this one will go back here and we'll flip that over, glue this, and then that goes on. Now it's on the left side here, not the right one. So make sure you're flush on this outer edge. This is the outer panel of your card, okay? So make sure you're good. If you're hanging over, you can always take your scissors, trim that little hair off of there, and you're good to go. So that's this panel, okay? Grab another one, let's look at the back. Okay, it's got the green. So a little note about this foil. It's very delicate. <laughs> um, and when you run it through an embossing folder, that is such a texture, it does start to peel your paper. So be very careful you don't brush hard things against the foil, um, it'll raise that up. So just a little note on that. Um, I embossed all these myself for you guys, just to make sure that they were good. And I mean, like this one right here, you can see it starts to, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little white there, the paper starting, the foil lifts up from the paper. Okay, so the green, We'll go on to our white panel here. Oops, I got glue on my fingers. Okay, foil needs a little bit more time to dry. It is a little bit more waxy on that back side. So, and you gotta be careful with the foil. I got glue on my fingers, and so I don't wanna get glue on the foil. If you get glue on the foil, oh, see that? It doesn't even wanna stick. <laughs> it's kind of a little waxy on the back. If you get glue on the foil, grab out your Goo Gone and a Q-tip and you can definitely take it off with Goo Gone and a tool, a Q-tip, okay? So there's that. Now flip it over, and we're gonna glue the green down. Okay, so that's gonna go here, okay? Oh, we can glue this too, as long as we're at it. This little strip will get glued. So let's get both of these prepped with some glue. So there's that, and that one. Okay, this goes on the left edge, dominoes here. That goes on the left edge. Don't worry about this one because that's where it gets glued onto the card. And just adhere that so that your outer edge here is flush. Um, you're not familiar with Goo Gone. Well, lo and behold, I have it underneath my sink down here. This is, it's called, oh, Goo Gone, adhesive remover. <laughs> I thought it was called Goo Gone. <laughs> I call it Goo Gone. It's actually just adhesive remover. So um, you take, and there's like a little sponge top on it. Hi, Donna from Pennsylvania. Okay, this guy went over here. And make sure you get it flush on the left. Now remember, you had to stamp that sentiment a little bit closer to the left. Otherwise, you would have covered part of it up. And that happened <laughs> last night. Okay. You guys, that's it. That, that, oh, wait, 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 one more. So flip this over and we're gonna glue our red foil. So the red and green foil come 12 by 12 sheets and two to a pack. So you get four sheets of foil, um, two of each color. And so it is fun to work with. Hi, Cindy from Southern Virginia. Okay, so remember your outer edge is flush, top is flush, and then if we need to trim anything, we can. Okay, all right. You might get fingerprints on this foil paper too. So just be careful with the fingerprints. All right, so we got everything kind of like glued and like ready to start working on this thing. <laughs> okay, let's go back to this thing now. So what I would, you guys, I recommend tear and tape. Um, if you have the red, whatever that red tape is, that kind of works too. I like tear and tape because you can rip it to the length you need it. Um, and this might seem excessive to you, but it works for me. You can use whatever you want because I won't see what you're doing at home. <laughs> so I'm putting actually eight strips of tear and tape because I want the tear and tape to be close to each of these fold lines. Okay. Hi, Chris Dudrenke. 
So you could put one right in the middle, but I feel like, um, do you want, Kathy, the papers on these or do you want the papers on this? I can flip these over so you can see them. Um, I'm not sure exactly. Please show the papers on each piece again. Okay, I'll, I'll go around in a circle as soon as I'm done doing the tear and tape. So if you put tear and tape only in the middle, I feel like it wouldn't be as secure near the edges. So I am going to do this on all of these three quarter inch panels. Boom, like that. Okay, so now I've got that prepped. Okay, I know it seems like it's excessive, but it'll be really easy to do this. So, Kathy, we've got, this is the start of our card, like this. So the green, and then when you flip it, it's got the red. Then this one was next. You flip it, it's got that one. And then you got the green trees next you flip it and you've got the green and then you've got this one here hi jewel from alabama you flip it and you've got the red foil and that takes us back to where we began okay so now let's work on putting these pieces together first things first i want to make my little box here my little square and i'm going to do that by taking off the two outer pieces of tear and tape, like this, and I'm just gonna kind of fold this. You gotta be gel, you guys, tear and tape, not good if you get it in the wrong spot, okay? So you gotta get this in here. It's gotta be, I've got it flat on my surface. And I'm gonna get it right so that the edge hits the score line and it creates like a nice little box. It's not a box, it's a square, <laughs> whatever, right? It creates this right here, okay? So like now, I'm gonna just gonna fold these different ways just to make sure that the, they are nice and flexible, okay? So we've just created that, okay? So that's the first of it. Hi, Dawn from Georgia. Thanks for popping on. Okay, so now we have this panel. So you can take off the next two pieces of tear and tape, okay? And we are going to attach the next panel to that, which is this one. <clears throat> so what's gonna happen is you want it to go right flush with this edge here, and you can do it by setting it down straight. You could go like this. I mean, it's however you feel most comfortable doing it. I guess what I'm going to do is try to line it up this way. Just know that once it hits that tear and tape, you don't have much. It's like the point of no return. Okay. So. Okay. You don't want to go too far in or close to this because when you go this way, it's going to get caught there. So I went back far enough that it was away from that little ridge there. Okay. You want to make sure you're straight. <laughs> if you get it crooked, it's going to look crooked. So now you can take off the next couple pieces of tear and tape. We're gonna, we're doing these one by one, okay? So the next panel is the green panel here. Same thing, hi Yolanda. We're gonna make sure that we're straight, not too close to that fold. And once you commit, you gotta go for it, okay? So there's that, okay? So that's attached and then that will fold down okay so far so good and we have one panel left here this last one so take your tear and tape peel it off now you could use liquid glue I feel like that would be messy and you could use glue dots but that would be a lot of glue dots to put down you could use your tape runner but because it's a fun fold tape runners don't do well with fun folds <laughs> so that's why I go the tear and tape route and this last one, gotta be very careful. <laughs> Make sure you get it straight on here, not too close to this to that at that edge there. And once you've got it, you just put it on. And now you've got hi Wendy. You got your pinwheel card, right? Not so crazy, actually, when you take it step by step. 
Now we have this tree, nothing crazy about that. We're gonna pop that, I'm actually gonna pop it up with dimensionals. And then we're gonna put some pretty red rhinestones on it. And I thought about not popping this up, but I can't not pop something up on a card. So <laughs> this is it, now, this is one of the things. So you have to be careful when this card is this way, if you put your tree over here, you're gonna see part of it. So I purposely put this over here so that you wouldn't see it. Oh, and you know what might be good? I'm trying to center it. If you guys look here, I'm trying to center it between this line and that line. You might be able to do that or not. I'm not sure everybody's paper was cut at a different point. So if you can do that, great. And otherwise, <clears throat> just get it on there. Okay. The red rhinestones are exquisite with this. Okay, that's, <laughs> Deb, why I changed to red, I think. Real red. Because these rhinestones are real red. They are not the cherry cobbler. So, all right. I gave you guys nine. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now, if you're at home and you're thinking, I need something on the top of my tree, go through your stash of stuff and find a, something for the top of your tree. I thought I didn't know a diamond or something. I thought it looked nice just with the red ornaments on it versus having something at the top because it was so close to the sentiment. So I have nine of them in there for you. So here's where you can write a sentiment. And then lastly, we have this little guy right here, which is there. So you guys have 11 inches of sheer ribbon. And so, let's see, I'm pretty sure I gave everybody 11. My mom cut 11, so we'll just do 11 so you guys have exactly what I have here. So this is the red sheer ribbon that's in the mini holiday catalog. And it's very nice to work with, makes pretty bows. Okay, so how do we do this? What I would do is take my tear and tape and I would prep the back of it with some tear and tape. And that's where my ribbon is gonna attach to. The trick with the tear and tape is that the harder you press down, the easier it is for it to um, come off. And so I'm gonna do this guy over here and I'm gonna just weave back like this. So it looks like this right now on the back, okay? That's what I got going on. <clears throat> and then it's gonna come down and you're gonna make a little loop on the opposite side and then you have a little tail. So you, you probably got more than enough to do that. Hi, Carol Fox. And so I'm not sure if that's gonna hold there because there's no tape really holding it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a couple more pieces of tear and tape and secure my ribbon with the tear and tape because ultimately I do want to use dimensionals on the back of this. So I got one tail coming this way and one tail coming that way. You trim your tails and then I'm gonna use some dimensionals back here so that it pops up. Yep, two things popped up on here. That one and the other guy. So I covered, I tried to cover up, I didn't peel off the tear and tape here, I treated it like it was single-sided tape in this case. Hi, Ethel King. <laughs> Better late to the party than not there at all, girl. <laughs> okay, so now again, when you put this down, you don't want it to be in the center because you might see the ribbon and if that's what you want, that's more than okay. But I'm gonna put this right about here so that it's hidden behind. You can see a little of the ribbon peek out, but on this one, oh, I never even trimmed my tails on that one. Ha, huh, there, I'm gonna make you slanted. Okay, so how is that, you guys, for doing, I didn't put any embellishments here because I did not want them to go into the foil paper, okay? And you flip here, you've got that guy, you flip there, you've got the tree scene, and then you've got wishing you a joyful Christmas. So even though the greens are slightly different, like this green matches with that, then here you've got red with the polka dots, here you've got red with that green, 
and then here you've got more red that green it, it, it all goes together but you would never pick this pattern to go with like that <laughs> so you guys I really sat <laughs> and struggled <laughs> thankfully I had Carissa's guidance and help with what like how you have to when you're doing this at home you, you have to pick out this piece of paper and something there maybe and then something here but then when you flip there it you got to have this matching too oh look at that I put that over just I could have put it over a little bit more but you see, but all you see is that little bit of it peeking out, which is okay. A lot quicker and seems easier than I've ever seen before. Okay, well, <laughs> that's good, I think. <laughs> that's hopefully good. So, I mean, if I really wanted to, I could try to pull that off and move it in. But I am okay with that. I'd rather not pull it all apart. Um, but yeah, you guys, we got our pinwheel card. It, like, It's not crazy. It, I think the hardest part is actually picking out your paper, which... That's what takes the most time. So I hope that you guys liked that one. Hi, Terry. A little late, but better late than never, we say. So I think that's clean. Oh, maybe it's not. So let's get the cleaning thing out, and we will clean these. I can't remember if I cleaned them or if I didn't clean them very good. Hi, Mary. Okay, Penny says it's cute. Sandy says it's pretty. All of it looks great together. Thank you, Dawn. Okay. Now they're clean if I didn't have them clean. All right, so let's move these out of the way. And we're going to roll you guys right next into the next one. Oh, man, which is this one. <laughs> All right, so credit where credit is due. You guys, when I get awesome swap cards that are fun folds, that I feel like, whew, these would be fun cards to case. But I save them and I case them. And so this one was a Candy Michael creation. And whoever has the name for it, I don't have it. But I call it a pull tab. But it's, I know it's not a pull tab. But it pulls open like this. So that's super cool. So I cased her layout. Okay. I completely used different products. And Krista and I actually we designed this one together. And so mine opens like this. And it says Christmas greetings. And so I featured um, on this card the sweet little stockings. But you guys, you're like, where are the pets? No pets. <laughs> I just used Very Merry. And then on the inside it says Christmas greetings. Okay, so that's what we got going on. Um, I wanted to show you that even though it's a pet set, you don't have to use the pets if you don't want to. The dyes are what makes this one so cool. Um, the dyes are the sweet stocking dyes. And so you guys, in your kits, let's pull out. You guys, be very, 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 very careful. Oh, the bits and parts in this will make you cringe. <clears throat> Ask my mom. <laughs> <laughs> I think she was hating everything after we were done. <laughs> so, poor mom. Um, so this is from some of the sweet stocking paper. Um, that's your stocking. You'll have that cut out. You guys will have a little holly leaf, which actually comes from the dyes as well. These are the felt. You guys, this is the first time I worked with the felt was with this card. <clears throat> Excuse me. I cut out all of the stocking pieces here. So the little toe and heel and then the cap at the top this also is from the die set it's the little tag that goes there <clears throat> excuse me it's the fine art floral ribbon everybody got eight inches you guys you're gonna need to cut it in half right so cut it in half it saved my mama cut instead of giving you guys half pieces she gave you one long one and all you're gonna do is take one of the ends and then you're gonna fold it in to make like the little knot here Okay, so you could do that already for both of them. Get that one ready <clears throat> and get this other one ready. You only need enough to, to glue the other end underneath the evening evergreen layer. Hi, Jody Storman. Okay, so you got your little tabs here ready to go. They're up there. You have a piece of evergreen that's five and a half by four and a quarter. That's your base. <clears throat> Excuse me. I got the frog going on. Then your cherry cobbler. I think, Deb, that's why I switched to Real Red here is because I'm like, oh, we use Cherry Cobbler in this one. <laughs> that was another rationale, I think. So, you guys, this is embossed with the Tasteful Textile Embossing Folder. It's four by five and a quarter, so that's going to go here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, you guys. Oh, man. Oh, I got to I gotta score mine. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'll show you guys how to score. So, this is your inside vanilla mat. You have an uh, evergreen mat, a designer mat. I'm going to show you how to cut them because I have yours already cut. And then two and a half by two and a half, two and three quarter by two and three quarter. Those are your mats here. 
<clears throat> and then last but not least, you guys also have these little bits of the, they are called, what are they called? They're called decorative dots. Okay. And they come green, yellow, this evergreen color and red. And I tried to mix and match everybody so that you got a red, a green, and then the evergreen. And you got a small, a medium, and a large. And I am so sorry. They are cut, each individual. And so just be very, 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 very careful um, opening up your kits because there's a lot of stuff. You might want to, like, put a box. <laughs> put this, open this one in a box so that nothing gets lost on you. You have a Sahara sand piece here that is three and a half by... Ten and a half. All right, we got a score. I should have brought my diagonal plate down, but I forgot. So we're going to do this on the fly here. <clears throat> so I said it's ten and a half. So ten and a half divided by three is what? Three and a half and seven. So three and a half and three and a half, right? So this is sections of three and a half by three and a half here. But <laughs> there's a diagonal here. <clears throat> so we have to make the diagonal. <laughs> I use that scoring tool to do that, but I don't have that down here. I don't have my diagonal plate down here. So we're going to have to use this. Okay. What we need to do is we need to get a score line from this corner to that score line. So how do you do that? Put it in your trimmer and line up that score line to that corner right there. And make sure you use your scoring tool, not your cutting tool or your blade. <clears throat> Okay, Glenn, uh, that would be, if you have something you can use on hand, that would be perfect. Um, they could be stuck to the back of a piece of paper, you guys. My mom had to open up every kit to make sure that she put these in because we found one after the fact. That's why she hated it so much. Because I'm like, no, we got to find where this one was missing. And she found it. But in the interim, these dots, we saw that they stuck to the back of paper. So those little dots... They could be stuck somewhere in your envelope. Look in the bottom of your envelope, Lynn. That's usually where stuff ends up too. So that's making that score line, okay? And then we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna do the same thing on this side. From this corner down to this one, and we're gonna put a score line. <clears throat> no message of the madness on this one. We're just making two diagonal score lines here and here, okay? So, when you have this now, this side gets folded in. When you guys got these in your kits, I folded them, or one went this way and one went that way, but ultimately they both need to come in, okay? So then this, how does it go, you guys? I gotta look at it. This one goes up like this, okay? You guys will maybe have to finagle this. Hi, Barb Collins. You may have, to, oh, did I just do, oh, no, it's fine. This one comes down then. And you guys, you guys might need to finagle. Like, if you don't have them scored exactly in the corner, you can manipulate them to go exactly into the air, like, the where they need to go. And so now I'm just kind of, like, holding this together. And then take your bone folder and burnish it. Okay, so that's, let's see if I got that right. I kind of look at it. Yep, it goes like that. Okay, so good. Now, we also have over here these two pieces. You guys already have them done, but what I wanted to show... Hi, Susan Reed. No worry for being late. It's all good. I wanted to show you... I just cut everybody's in half diagonally. So it started off... I believe this is a 3x3 three three square, so you can maximize your designer paper. And all I did is go corner to corner and cut them in half. And then this was a little bit bigger. It was like three and three sixteenths by three and three sixteenths. Just go corner to corner and you just cut them at a diagonal. All right, Judy Bobo, thanks for stopping in quick and saying hi. Yep, I can open the tan piece again. Okay, so it opens like this. So when you guys are working on it, your folds should be going diagonal, like starting at the bottom left, going up to the top right. So bottom left to top right. They both fold in, then this one folds that way, and this one folds down, okay? So that's how we're doing the tan piece here, okay? I hope that makes sense, Stacy. Um, okay, 
we can get just a little, no, let's stamp. Let's not get glue happy right now. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna set these off to the side. Let's get a little stamping under our belts. So we have an inside and we have this and our sentiment. And so let's pull out the piercing mat because these are photopolymer stamps. And we have the Merry Christmas and the Very Merry and a present, okay? So I used cherry cobbler on this one. Okay, so let's put this here and we're gonna do Merry Christmas. And that will get stamped, I did cherry cobbler, but if you guys would rather do a different color, like a green, you're fine with that too. So this goes right about here. And then we've got the present, and that's stamped in green. Oh, so we got the red open. Let's do our Very Merry. So you've got the little arrow bannery thing here. And that is in the cherry cobbler as well. Okay. Then I'm going to, I have a clear acrylic block, and I'm just going to dip in and get some ink and set that off to the side. We are going to need that for coloring in our bow and for doing a little Stella ing. Oh, Stella took a break on that last card. Whew, we gotta get her out for this next one. So we have our little present. I'm gonna stamp that in Evening Evergreen near the bottom. And that's it for the inks on this one. Okay, Stella needs to come out here. And I'm gonna, whoa, that happened to me last time too. Let's get that back in there. There, so. I, this is a glitter pen, guys. It's called Winka Stella. And I'm going to dip into my block, which has the cherry cobbler ink on it. And I'm going to come over to my present and use my Stella pen to add the cherry cobbler to my bow here. Okay. So you can use your Stella pen to add color to your project. Okay. So. If you want to add a little bit more, she runs out of ink and you just got to keep getting more ink. And then when you're done, you just wipe it out. So that's the inside piece, but it's hard to tell on here. But if you look, it looks like there's little dirty speckles and that's actually cherry cobbler ink. And so what we're going to do is take the Stella pen and <laughs> we're gonna take a scrap of paper here <clears throat> because this goes everywhere, I promise it does. Um, gotta get, make sure she's got a little juice in her brush tip there. And you're just going to take, I take a scissors or a bone folder and you add splatter. Don't touch it right away because it'll smear. But can you see that? I don't know if you can. Hang on. Let me put a piece of paper up there. There, you can kind of see there's little splatters of red all throughout there. It just makes an empty, voided space. Like, it looks, it looks like it's got background now. And when you're done with the color in your Stella, you just run her out of, of ink, and then she will be good to go. All right, so now we have all, hi, Sonia. Now we have all of our inky dinky doos done. We can <laughs> get glue happy, I think. Okay, so let's see. This could get flipped over. And you guys know I like to do a couple at the same time. As long as I have the glue open, we're gonna glue get glue happy. So we can go ahead and I'm gonna put glue on the back of these three things. Yes, poor little kitty is going to go nine eye on the back side here. Okay, so this is what I have for my matting. That you can tell now it's the pet designer paper. Yes, the ink splattering is so much fun. I, Gina Bulo, my friend, taught me that many years ago, not many, like three years ago, four years, five years ago, I can't remember, but she loves to splatter. So that's where I get that from. Okay, so there's that one. And then, I'm gonna have to take these and pick this up this way. So this one gets put on to our evening evergreen mat. Okay, and then this last triangle here goes onto this one. You guys, I like the liquid glue because now I can wiggle it around. 
and get it exactly where it needs to be. Now, don't go putting these on quite yet, though. We gotta get make sure our ribbon is good. Let's glue these together. So we can flip that over, and we can flip that over. We're gonna glue these next. So, the, you guys, the Tasteful Textiles, people ask me all the time, is there a front and a back? It's whatever side you like better put up. To me, they look identical, and sometimes one looks like it has more texture than the other. Sometimes it doesn't. It's like sometimes you feel like a knot, sometimes you don't. Uh, there. Okay, and now, this is important. <laughs> You'll make sure that's facing the right way, and then put your inside in. Just like this. Okay, still good. Now we're gonna just flip this over and put a little adhesive glue on the back of this. Making sure you got it right because you don't want it going upside down. I guess at this point it doesn't matter <laughs> because we can flip this any which way. So this now just gets glued onto our cherry cobbler, just like that, centered top to bottom, left to right. <clears throat> now our pull tab things. <clears throat> you guys, I like my tear and tape with ribbon, not liquid glue. Um, liquid glue doesn't dry so fast and it makes your ribbon crunchy. So I'm going to put some tear and tape along each side here. Not too close to the edge because you don't want it to be seen or heard, right? Like a kid when you were growing up <laughs> back in the day. Children to be seen but not heard. That's <laughs> what my mom always said. So uh, this tape is far enough in so you can't see it. And then I'm just going to kind of secure my tab here, top to bottom, right? So centered and then enough for the tab. I might go in just a hair here. So something like that. And then the other one goes like that. Maybe in a little further, okay? Get them to where you like them, you guys. It's your card, right? Put them where you want them. Hopefully they're <laughs> even across. <laughs> okay, so because I am me, <laughs> he saves them all for you. So Dawn, you are an Almond Joys fan. <laughs> oh yeah, they're good. Um, so I like the tear and tape here. It's called a sandwich. So I'm sandwiching my ribbon, especially with this card, you guys. It's good to do the double tear and tape because you're gonna be pulling on this. You don't want it to come apart. So that's prepped and ready for this now. So we're gonna put our liquid glue on the backs of those. And then one goes on the bottom here. One goes on the top. Okay, so far so good. Mounds are better, but beggars can't be choosers. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I think my favorite's Kit Kat. If you guys put a Kit Kat in me, I have a hard time resisting a Kit Kat. Twix are even harder though, because I love my caramel. So there we go. So that's what we've got so far. So I hope you guys are along with me, along for the ride here. Now you have to be very careful with this because you're only putting adhesive on the top part, not the bottom. So how do you wanna do that, right? Good question. How I would do it, so I make sure I don't go over. Okay, so grab a corner and you, I would put adhesive here and here, a little there, and then I would actually come over here and put a little adhesive there. So between these areas, you know you're not gonna go over in any direction. And then make sure you put the glue on the right corner, so the top right corner. I'm gonna squish this down flat, and I'm gonna set this on here. I'm trying to line up the corner to the corner so that when it's flat, it's straight. Okay, something like that. Give this a second because you want that glue to really adhere before you start working more on it, so, okay? Now let's set that aside and work on our stocking. The question came up last night, how do you glue this felt on? Well, you can see that <laughs> I didn't do a good job. I put one little glue dot. I put one little glue dot. It didn't work so good. It doesn't want to stick with one little glue dot, you guys. I They found that the tear and tape worked really nice, but the tear and tape is a pain in the butt. But they were trying to put the tear and tape on the felt, and it's really hard to peel the felt off. But, you know, I just realized now, why aren't we putting the tear and tape on our stocking? 
right? Put the tear and tape on the stocking and then put the felt. Tear and tape seem to stick better than the glue dots. And that just solved that problem. Holy Moses, I wish I would have thought of that last night. We literally were trying to pick at tear and tape at the back of these stockings for forever and it just didn't work so good. But you guys, one is the heel and one is the toe, right? So, hmm, I'm gonna put, hi Tabitha, I'm gonna put a little baby section of tear and tape right at the toe here and hope that I didn't put too much on. And you might wanna just set this on it so you know how it goes. Okay, so something like that. Squish that tear and tape good. That shouldn't come off. How do I wanna do the heel? <laughs> I think I'm gonna go for two glue dots and I'm gonna put them on the heel versus, I just had a hard time putting it on the felt. So I'm scared to put adhesive on the felt. You guys, I would definitely not put liquid glue with your felt. It will soak through the felt and then it'll make it really crunchy. You gotta be careful with this. The felt sticks to you. So I think that it goes like that. And you should know because it's got the same curvature as the stocking does, okay? All right, so we're getting there. We got that stocking put together. Now, what did I do with the stocking? I popped that up with dimensionals. I know because I could feel them. Oh man, there's Summer. There's my kitty cat. That's what my cat used to look like when I had her. She was a gray haired with a pink nose <laughs> and a white belly. And her belly always <laughs> swept my floor for me. Okay, so, oh, and I put the dimensional right over her head. Poor girl. <laughs> oh man. Okay, so this guy's gonna go on here like that. And then we're gonna put some dimensionals behind this, this banner part. I'm gonna follow up with a liquid glue spot right on the pokey end here or the pointed end, okay? Because that's already popped up underneath the stocking. So I don't wanna pop that up more. So that's gonna go right about there, okay? We're getting there, guys. All right, Mary, get Gary his supper. Tell him I say hi. Lastly here, we have this little guy. So we're gonna Stella him as well put a little bedazzle on and then I would say a glue dot for this one so let's grab a glue dot and put that right over here press it good so I've noticed that my glue dots if they're cold they don't like to bond really well so oh that's a good idea Penny you know Penny has a really good point you guys for those of you that are making your cards with me I don't slow down very much. <laughs> I go right through it, right? I keep the party going. And so what um, Penny just said is she's going to make this card during the replay so she can do go stop it and start it, stop it, start it with me. Carissa has told me what she does is she watches the video with me live so she can ask questions if she has them. And then she always goes back and watches um, the video again when she's putting the cards together. And then she can also start it, stop it, pause it, however, or fast forward. Um, so, all right, we're almost there. So now we have our little rinky-dinky embellishments here. Hi, Kathy. So you guys, I've got different, so these are the ombre <laughs> um, decorative dots. And so I've got a little green one here. So there was, everybody got a different combination of green and there's putty on there, hang on stuck to here <laughs> so and so you got a little one a big one and a medium one in terms of size right and then you either you got a red a green and then this is what I mean by the ombre you guys every one of these is different they're all different sizes well I mm, these three are the same size these three and these three but then the so three are the same three are the same three are the same and then there's different patterns of lightness okay so and then we got a medium one. So let's put that guy over there. I do as much as you are comfortable and then you come back and finish. That is perfect, Ellen, too. Yeah, do what you can to keep up with me, right? Don't ever feel rushed or stressed out. That is the last thing I want you guys to feel. But do what you can and then come back to it and finish what you can later. I, you guys have a PDF tutorial from me. It's always emailed the by the Monday before class, right? 
or sooner if I have them written sooner, you guys. I do have a full-time day job, so I don't get to always writing them as, as early as I'd like to, but I do try to get them out by the Monday before class, and then that gives you a few days. If I'm a slacker, it's Tuesday, and then if I forget, then Sandy reminds me, and then I send them out. So it's a team effort, guys. So there we go. It wasn't so crazy, right? You know, I hope you guys get like an idea now that you have the actual layout template measurements, how you put it together, that you'll make more of this awesome card. So you guys, if you recall, I cased Candy Michaels card and she did the penguin with some of the tidings and trimmings and it was a super cool layout. So definitely cased her layout, but completely changed it all up. So, all right, you guys, there we go. Um, oh, that Jennifer, that's exactly what Carissa does. Um, Laura, I don't know what you're, you checked for. You said, I've checked everything and can't find mine. I'm not sure what you can't find. <laughs> you gotta, I don't, I'm about 10 seconds ahead of you guys. So sometimes I can't know exactly what you're talking about. Um, so I try to always remember, but, um, let's see here. So that is that card. We'll put, let's see here. I think, is that the last one? Okay. So there's two. You guys have got two done. PDF. Oh, you checked. <laughs> I thought maybe you couldn't find the um, these little guys. Okay. So Laura, what I need you to do, I don't know why. I know I sent it in an email. You were included. I don't know if you could just send me an email to my email address and I'm going to reply to it. And then we're going to test to make sure you got that email. If you got that email, then you should be getting emails from me. And then I'll try to send the PDF again. And it's possible that your internet or your email provider blocks certain sizes of emails from me, right? So you have to check to, and that, that could be part of it because the PDF tutorials aren't necessarily, they're four pages of a PDF. So that could be it as well. So, okay, you guys, oh, here's the, this was the card I was just looking for. Ha <laughs> ha, not this one. Okay, so we got two done. All right, let's put you over there. You guys, we got to clean the stamps. Let's clean the stamps before we keep going. Thanks, Janice. All right. Um, the other thing too, Laura, is I'm going to write a note on here to help make sure that I check for your email when I get done and we can test it. Because I don't want you guys not to have the PDF tutorial. That's part of my class. I just, I can't control why you guys don't get emails from me. You know, <laughs> I, as long as I have the right email address, then I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why you wouldn't get it from me. So, all right, let's clean up shop here a little bit. Put this away. All right, we're gonna work on this one next, you guys. So, this one is, I call it a bay window card. My grandma Haas had, and grandpa, they had a bay window like this. I have a bay window in the hive. So when it sits like this, it pops out like a bay window. And it's pretty cool. And it opens like this. And for some reason, you guys, I put adhesive in here. And it just does not want to stay. Well, you know what? I'm going to pickle it right now. We're going to put some tear and tape right here. That liquid glue did not want to hold that shut. So if you guys ever pull your tear and tape off and it's too long, all you have to do is fold it right back. And then now that should seal the deal. Okay. So this is what we're going to work on. This one features, so I'm going to leave it set like that maybe. I used on this one, actually Chris and I made this one together. You guys, I had some stamping time with Carissa and it was fun. We made this card together. Nature's Harvest is the stamp set that got used. And then the dies actually weren't the Nature's Harvest dies except for the label. It was just the layering circles, the two of them here. Okay, so from here, that little label was used and otherwise nothing else die wise from the set and you got to know where I got my inspiration from or we should say our we got ours so I saved this one so uh, Kathleen made this one and I copied the layout you guys I this was a swap card and it came and she used more designer paper in here <laughs> I didn't go that crazy <laughs> so um that was the inspiration just the layout for the card so but we pulled in nature's harvest for this Okay, so what you're gonna need are some markers for the coloring of the flower. And you're gonna need some stamps, so you'll need the flower. So I'll move this out of here. 
and you need, I've got crumb cake for the wheat and espresso for the flour and espresso for the sentiment. So the wheat on the inside. I don't know if you guys noticed that I put a little wheat thing. Okay, so that comes from a set that's called Time of Giving. I would never have remembered this, but Carissa was like, there's wheat in there. <laughs> Yay, oh, perfect. So that accompanied this card <laughs> because the designer paper has the wheat on it. So, all right, we need to grab our kit. So you guys, not as many bits and parts on this one as the last one. But definitely enough pieces, you guys. Will you get appreciation for the paper cutting after you see all these pieces? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. So, all right. Your design or your paper here is a normal 11 by 4 and a quarter. And it's scored at 5 and a half. And then from 5 and a half, it's scored at 3 eighths inch from that 5 and a half. So, 5 and, five and 7 eighths. Okay. And... Then you've got some panels here that are scored. Hi, Trudy. You have some panels here that are scored. So let's see here. I don't know if that's exactly. Let me get my ruler. If I scored that. That should be five and a half. Yeah, that's five and a half. So if that's five and a half, let me just see here. It's 11. Okay. Math was hard right there, guys. <laughs> All right. So, um, you have here a one and a half inch section and then the middle panel is a little bit bigger. And I'm trying, I don't know if I have my notes. I have to have my notes in here. Cause I know that some of you guys like to hear the measurements. So let's see here. You, it's 11 by four and a quarter, score at five and a half, five and seven eighths, seven and three eighths, nine and an eighth, and 10 and five eighths, okay? If you guys missed that, you can catch the replay. I'm gonna keep it rolling. But what you gotta do is you got to burnish these edges really good. So that's one. And then here's another one. All right, Diane, we'll see you later. Glad you love, love, love them. <laughs> okay, so there's that one. This one. And then this one actually, because this goes like this, it actually comes out this way. Because that will get tucked. It gets tucked behind there. Okay, so that's what we've got for our scoring and folding. So in your kits, you guys, you have a piece of vanilla, vanilla. It's a five and a quarter by four. That's for your inside mat. You guys have your, it started off as a two by four. <laughs> and I cut yours. And if you look at it, you'll find that they match. So I can't know, I can't remember if my mom got them in there straight or not, but ultimately, your pattern should line up. So if for some reason you're looking at it and your pattern doesn't quite line up, it's because it's not right. If you twist them around every which way, you'll see that they do line up. And I tried to make sure they lined up so the pattern followed over here on this side. Okay, so that's for your inside. You have two little strips that are a quarter inch by um, four. They don't match up to anything. There's just like, like strips. And then this starts off actually as a four by four. So you guys, this is great because you get nine of these out of a 12 by 12 sheet. So it actually starts out by four by four. And what I did as we were kidding, I cut these and mom put them right on your kits. And so I went in one and a quarter and then I went from this way one and a quarter and that gives you one and a half here. One and a quarter and one and a quarter is two and a half and plus one and a half makes four, okay? So what I did is I made sure I was at one inch and I came in at one and a quarter. And then what I did is I, I gotta make sure I do this. So I'm gonna flip this this way and do one and a quarter this way. And then all of your pieces, this is the harvest, the nature's harvest paper. It goes with this whole suite of products. It's called nature's harvest in the mini catalog, Penny. So these all, if you are looking at them, they all should line up. And then what happens is you glue them separately like this. So let's, let's, mm, let's stamp first. <laughs> always like to stamp first, you guys. It's always good to get that done. So I'm going to set these over here. We're going to have to just stamp a sentiment and our flower and the inside wheat thing. Okay, so these are all red rubber stamps. 
So I don't need to grab out my piercing mat to put underneath, but we're gonna put the wheat. So when you stamp the wheat, you have to be a little bit cautious. If you stamp the wheat all the way to the edge here, it's gonna get, um, part of it's gonna get missing. Yeah, the one you didn't get, Penny. Ha <laughs> ha, that's how it goes, right? So when I stamp this, I'm gonna move over a quarter of an inch or so, so that all of it shows when I glue that in. Okay, so that's the only thing I stamped in crumb cake. <clears throat> then the other two things are stamped in early espresso, and one is the flower. Flower. You guys probably hear me say that. Every time I say flower, I think of Bambi. Okay, so ink that up, and we're gonna stamp our flower on our vanilla circle. And, oh, I smeared it. I smeared it good. So we're gonna flip it over, and we're gonna try again. And I'm gonna try not to smear it. <laughs> Hi, Tammy. Okay, so straight up, straight down, no smearing. Perfect, okay? And then our sentiment is last, and that's thank you. So guys, when it comes to this, you wanna practice. So my T looks like it's up a little bit, so I'll practice one more time and bring my T down slightly and then it's straight, that's how I know. So when I hold my stamp, I'm gonna bring my T down, like I think I'm gonna be straight, but then I'm gonna bring my T down just a hair. There, so then it made it straight. Practice stamping so you know how you have to hold it because they're not always, the words are not always aligned with the actual stamp on the back. Okay, that's it for stamping. Yes, Tammy, you can definitely catch the replay. All right, you guys also have some diamond weave ribbon that is part of this whole suite that will go on your card as well. And let's color. So the blends that I used, I brought in the bronze and I'm gonna do a little bit of bronze on the, I don't know if you guys can see where I'm going. I don't know, the, the part of the, the bottom part of the middle there and then the top part of that bottom part. That's where I went with the bronze. Thanks for sharing. Um, so the ink colors that I used for this, uh, Stacy were crumb cake for the wheat and early espresso for the other two things. And then I'm gonna use cider. And cider goes over the whole thing. And that will help to blend it together. So it's the bottom part of this roughage on the bottom and the top of the ball here, <laughs> the seedy ball thing. Okay, so that was bronze and the light cinnamon cider. And that's what I used to color in those two top, the, the center things. Then you guys can use coral, um, light or dark coral. If you want more of a contrast, use the dark coral. If you want less contrast, use light. But I think that the dark coral really makes this pop. And I'm gonna draw little lines versus color it all because it'll be easier for blending. So I'm making like little spider legs that are coming out, not coloring in the whole thing, okay? So that's the light dark coral. Then I'm gonna go over a little bit with the light coral and drag it out just a little further. Okay, and then last but certainly not least is dark daffodil and dark daffodil I think that that end is demolished, so I use the skinny end. I go over the whole entire thing with the dark daffodil, making sure you go over the coral very nicely because that will help blend the coral into the yellow. Okay, I'm gonna do one coat on all three of these areas, and then I'm gonna go back and just touch it up again to make sure that there's no direct lines with the coral but make sure you go over the coral. If you miss going over the coral, it's gonna look separated or divided between the two colors. You wanna bring these together and blend them nice. That's what blends are all about. So you can see that's my first run. And I know it's a little there. If I go right there, it's a little less blurry. Okay, so then I'm gonna go over one more time and try to make these really blend together nicely. You can mix these colors very nicely, okay. Okay, so that's it for daffodil. That's what I've got for coloring so far. And then 
the green, honestly, dark old olive, light old olive. You say potato, I say potato. Honestly, it doesn't matter. Do whichever one you like. If you want a little lighter of a stem, go for the light old olive. If you want to do blending, there, it's such a small space, you guys. I have a hard time blending in something so small like this. But if you really wanted to, you could blend these vein things of the leaves. So I just did a little bit of dark old olive. Now you could come over here and do some light old olive. And you get a little bit of the two-tone going on. And then you know what? We'll do this stem in light old olive. And you'll see when I put this up there, you're not gonna really see a difference. <laughs> right? So you've got the light. You can kind of see there that there's a little bit lighter around the edges and darker in the veins, but then you see that one's the dark. They look nice. Either one looks nice. So that's the coloring. I think our inky dinky do is done. So did I put the chamois away? I sure did. Let's clean up. And then you guys, we're going to put this card together. So we're going to clean up the thank you. So the thank you comes from the stamp set as well. And um, again, the wheat comes from a stamp set called Time of Giving. And then the coneflower was from Nature's Harvest. Nature's Harvest is in the mini catalog. So you guys, as you're watching this video, if you see any products that you would like to use, I always have my current host code for the live when I'm actually live is this. But if you go to place an order a couple days later or a week later and you're just seeing this video, then the host code that you're seeing is no longer active. It's mean, it means I've closed the workshop and I've opened up a new workshop. But if you go to cardsbychrisb.com, and you click on about me or on my events calendar, I always have the most updated host code on my website. So you never have to call me and ask me for a host code if you know you need to go to cardsbycrispy.com and look for the host code there. So that's my disclaimer. So the more that you blend, the more that you'll see on the back come through and that's good. So we're gonna, prep a couple pieces to put onto our card base here. So if you guys are seeing any products that you like, that you wanna get, if you put in a minimum order, depending on the class, sometimes it's 35, sometimes it's 40, uh, you can get future classes with me for free as long as you use my current host code. If you don't, remember to put the host code in. You can call Stampin' Up! and have them add it. Um, but if it has my current host code, then you can pick out a future class with me. So. In November, I went on the beginning of this live. Hi, Sue. I went at the beginning of the live and I showed you what's coming up for uh, November. And three of those classes are order-based classes where if you place an order getting whatever you want, um, as long as it's the minimum amount, you can get that class for me and I will mail you the kits in the mail. So that's how it works for me. I keep it kind of simple. You honestly, all you have to do is put the order in Use the host code and email me, call me, text me afterwards and say which class you want to get for free. And as long as it's one of those that you can get for free, I'll say yes, as long as it's by the RSVP date. <laughs> I try to make it simple. Okay, so those get glued right on. And then you guys remember your panels are here. Make sure they're in the right order. So we're going to flip all three of these over at the same time and put adhesive on the back the yellowy crushed curry color. We're definitely coloring or covering that up. And then I'm going to go one by one and pick these up and put them on my panels here like this. I sometimes have past classes available. Um, I do have, I have to go back and look. I have some ink, paper, scissors, actually the timeless tropical one from July. And I think I have one peach one left. Maybe I don't. I have to check you guys. Sometimes if you're wondering if I have past classes, all you have to do is ask me and I'll tell you what I have extra that I hadn't sold. Okay, so that's that so far. Now, we can keep working on our outside. Now, you have to be very careful. When you guys, got to make sure you don't put adhesive right there, right? And then you can see I accidentally and I had to rip off that dimensional because it wasn't meant to go there. If you put adhesive on those edges, it's going to want to seal the card flat. So how you want to do it is I would recommend, so your circle is going to go right about here. So I would recommend putting dimensionals onto the base here like that. Those four dimensionals will be enough to hold it. Perfect. 
but we need to grab some tear and tape because we need to get our ribbon adhered. And you wanna be careful because you don't wanna be seeing the ribbon per se come out. So we're gonna fold this in half. We're gonna put the tear and tape right about there. And then we're gonna bring the tails out and hopefully <laughs> we're in the middle section here. I'm gonna take some more tear and tape and just put that over the top to really secure this flat. Hi, Sandy. Okay, then this can come off. And we're just going to put this on our card front here. And go up a little higher if you want so that you've got room for your ribbon to poke out the bottom there. So something like that. Okay, and what I just realized is I put the dimensional right where I have the ribbon and it created a little hump. And I don't want a hump there, so I'm gonna put the dimensional up just a hair higher because it was giving me extra height right there and I could tell. And because it's got that much height, I'm actually gonna peel that off and secure that. So then it's good. All right, we're good. See, no glue there, no glue there, okay? Then we have our little sentiment, and I glued that flush on here, or flat, so just put a little dot of liquid glue there, and that's gonna get put right about there. Now, no adhesive over on that side because you don't want it sticking to your base here. Okay, right now, so that takes us to the inside, <laughs> okay? So let's flip this open. Okay, these two pieces need to get secure. Now, the main piece of advice I can give you guys is you have to make sure your dimensional is in a good spot here, your line of dimensionals, because my first time I put it on, I put my dimensionals too close to the edge and this stuck out like this, which is fine, but then it's kind of weird. Then the other time I put them in too close and then this stuck in way too far and it was too far in. So it's good to have the dimensional about three eighths of the way in and using a line is good. What I mean by, I'll, I'll show you a dimensional strip. So what we're gonna do, do so you wanna get make sure your pattern is right? So I think I messed mine up and huh, you just gotta play with it till you get them lined up right. Okay, so like that. So this one is glued flat. This one is popped up. And I don't wanna deal with this one. So I wanna glue it flat, but I don't wanna glue this one yet. So, sorry, this is how I did this, and if you guys want to do it another way, you're more than welcome to, but I wanted to get this one flat and not have to deal with it first. And how I do that is I line up this one right where it needs to go, kind of hold it, and you're going to put this one right next to it and just get it where it needs to go, okay? And because I use liquid glue, I got a little wiggle room. So that one's set. Now I can concentrate on this one and know that it just needs to go in this spot right here. Okay, I was talking about a line of dimensionals. So there's this edge of your dimensional sheet. It's perfectly good dimensional. I'm gonna flip this over this way and just measure how much, oh my gosh, that's exactly the right amount. I didn't know that, but I wanna cut a little short so that I don't have to risk this. So. I know that my way right side needs a good line of it right there. So that's gonna go on the way now, the way right side. But now I want another line right here. And I want this to be right about here. So I'm gonna flip this over again and we're gonna put, I'm gonna put one more line right there. And I'm gonna get it from the other side here. Huh! I thought about that when I flipped that over and I held my and I put that on with my left hand. I'm like, how many people are going to be able to put it on with their left hand? <laughs> so I want to be about a good quarter inch to three eighths inch away. I'm going to like think it's right there, you guys. Something like that. I'm going to try to get it straight because now this is going to go here. Okay. And do I want to just, okay. Just to be safe, I'm gonna glue this because this is the right height, so I don't have to trim that down. So I'm gonna get this glued. If you guys have a different way you wanna do this, you're more than welcome to. <laughs> I'm 
This is what my method to my madness was. Okay, so that's in here now, okay? And then this is gonna go here and now I can test it just to make sure. Boom, perfect, okay, I love it. So if you find that yours goes in too far, you need to bring your dimensionals out further. And if you feel like it goes like this and you can live with it, live with it. If it goes out like this far, you can't live with it, then you're gonna have to get, redo your dimensionals. But I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna peel these guys off. And then I'm gonna get this adhered right where I'm gonna get my nose in here. I don't know if you can see my nose. <laughs> I, I can't, couldn't see what I was doing. Okay, there, okay? So that's popped up. You can see a little bit of depth there. And now this slides right in there, okay, voila, voila. Now, <clears throat> they have, you guys have three brushed metallic dots, and I don't know if I have any of them in my, <clears throat> my, my tote here. They're all on the table over there, but you guys can see where I put them. I put two here and one here. You either got two large and a small, or you got two small and a large. Hi, Jean Benson. Okay. So that's it. You'll put your dimensionals here and here. And then with your ribbon scissors, you can trim your tails here. And I'm going to trim this one that way. Okay. We got our third card done, you guys. So we've got this one. We've got our Christmas one with the pinwheel. And we have the stocking done. So three done. One to go. And last but certainly not least is our Peaceful Place card. Okay, so let's regroup here. We'll move this guy out of the way. He's my sample and we're gonna pull in the card. Okay, so this, you guys, was a swap card that I got from Diane Bogenhagen, who's on my team, the Be Happy Stampers, an amazing stamper. And this is what I got for my swap card, you guys. I didn't change much about it. I did change minor details. She used rhinestones. I put in the subtle shimmer sequins. You can hate me now because they're loose in your cards. <laughs> she didn't have a back on here, and I put a back panel. I changed the pattern paper slightly on the inside, and I put a back on the card. So, But I have to give credit to Diane because she inspired me with this card, and I thought that you guys would love this card. So... People call this a spanner card. Hmm? I call it a bridge card because there's a bridge between these two strips and it's this thing here. How do you suggest to the receiver to keep it open? Um, Laura, this card or um, the last card? If you're talking this card, how do you keep it open? Do you mean like set up like this? Because it sets up just like this. I mean, if you keep it open, I'm not quite sure what you mean by keep it open? <laughs> You'll have to help me understand what you're asking. Um, so this was the, the sample card that I have that we're going to make tonight. And <laughs> this is uh, so many pieces too, you guys. So many layers. So we're going to have to look at our layers. The last card. How do you keep it open? So do you mean like open like this? And then it sets up like this. So do you mean open like that? Because... That's how it stays open. It needs to catch over here on that piece right there. It gets caught behind that designer paper right there. Okay. So, the bridge is your favorite. Woohoo, Penny. Well, I saved your favorite for last. Yay. Smoky Slate is your base. Oh, man. I didn't do mine either. <laughs> I saved all of them to show you guys in person. So, it starts off by eight and a half by five and a half. Oh, how would they know? You got to put a post it note on there, girl. <laughs> um, what you'd have to do is, I mean, they, I would like to think people will see that there's score lines here. And if you have folded this enough that it's flexible, what you could do is put a post-it note in here, like write your words, write your love note, put a post-it note and say, put an arrow that says the card slips in here. Like you have to tell people sometimes and it doesn't hurt to put a post-it note on there right? Sometimes people don't know. They don't know what they don't know, and they might not know that that slips in there. So put a post-it note on there and tell them that it does it. 
So your card base is eight and a half by five and a half. And you guys, I have yours scored for you at one and a quarter. All right, Jean, we'll catch you later. Packers are playing. Oh man, it's Thursday night. You're right. Hi, Feline. Okay, so the first thing I did was score this. You guys, my phone is going to die. Hang on. I got to adjust things here. Hang on. It, you got down to 15% on me. Look at that. Okay, we're back in business. Got everything going. Lost my chamois. But there's a score line here. And so what I do is I move this over to one and a quarter. And then I make sure I don't use the score, but I use the cutter. And I cut all of yours exactly like this on this machine. Um, all right, Ellen, we'll catch you later. Have a great weekend ahead too. So you're going to cut that at one and a quarter. And then I flip it around. And then I go down here on the bottom. I know I'm kind of cut off a little bit, but I go right to the score line. And I go like that. So all of yours got cut on my little cutter like this. This works perfect for this kind of a card. Okay. So, so now you have these panels, right? So with that cutter, if you guys notice on my cutter, good night, Ellen. If you notice on my cutter, it leaves some little phrase. If that happened to your card, all you have to do is take your scissors and you can cut some of them off. Um, it, that's what happens with that cutter as the blade starts to get dull. It leaves those little frays. Naughty Nancy was talking about some sort of a sand eraser type thing, like a, a, a like, and it kind of you can brush it against the paper and it takes those little things off. So um, that could be something you could use too. I'm trying to get that one right there. Get those little guys. There's little fuzzies on there. So. Okay, so this is how you guys have your card base. Let's get some pieces out of the way because there's a lot that needs to get glued. Um, you're going to save the white piece for stamping. This is the sacrificial lamb on the back here that just helps to hide. And then you have a piece of silver foil that's embossed with the silvery snowflakes from the wintry. I think wintry embossing folders. You're, leave your stitched rectangles off to the side for now. And then this piece of white but you want all these pieces, you guys. So you should have four of these gray, basic gray strips. You should have four pieces of designer paper that two are for the inside. Um, oh, they used to have an eraser that worked great. Oh, I don't have that. Um, so you have four pieces or strips of designer paper. I think I used these on yours though. For you guys, I used, they have little snowflakes in them, okay? so. I think I used up a scrap there. And then you have a piece that looks like this. It has the bark on the back. And then you have two pieces of the gray. Okay, so let's just get glue happy. I, there's so many pieces, you guys. I gotta, I gotta get rid of some of these. So flip over everything that you wanna glue and let's get them glued. So there's a little glue. There's a little glue. Glue glue. As long as I got my glue bottle open, guys, I might as well get some gluing done. Okay, so that's going to go on one of these gray mats. Okay, so we'll leave that guy like that. And then these four, I will go on your strips here. So that's one. Here's two. Whoa. It slides right around. There's three. Two, I mean. Haha. <laughs> I already lost track. Okay, so here's one more. And one last one here. Okay. There we go. So you got all your strips glued. Now, for you guys, the barky ones are, I put them on the inside. So let's look at this. So they're on the inside. So what's going to happen is this will get glued here and then this other piece gets glued here. So I'm gonna get these prepped with some glue and there's no reason why we can't glue these already. I gotta get some pieces put down, otherwise there's a lot of paper in front of me <laughs> on this one. It makes me nervous <laughs> just because there's so much paper. Okay, so I'm gonna start with um, Kathy saw where an old typewriter eraser, it was red and circle eraser with a brush on the end from back in the day was used to distress or remove the frayed hairs of paper. That is a good suggestion. I need to get myself one. Yes. 
Okay, so we've got a little hair of a margin there. And then I'm gonna do this one here, a little hair of a margin. And my finger stuck to it and brought it right up with me. So that'll go here. And then this one will go right in the middle. Okay, so eventually we're gonna stamp that and we'll just put it right down on here, okay? Now we have these two pieces and this piece and they will get glued on those. So let's put adhesive on here. Guys, I'm getting down to the bottom, bottom of my glue bottle. <laughs> when that happens, I start tapping it. <laughs> okay, so this one, so these two gray pieces were the same size. They were reversible. Um, and that's gonna go here. You guys, just a little thin smoky slate layer. It's not gonna be much. Okay, and then this one goes on this strip here. And then the last one goes over on this side. Okay, so we got a lot of gluing done. Okay, so now we get to stamp. Okay, so we got a lot of this prepped. So what do we need to stamp? If you look at this, I used Peaceful Cabin and we're gonna use the trees and some sentiments. Now you guys see that little fox right there? This is what I used for this card, but I did not pull in any stamps except for the little fox and the little sentiment here. All of the rest of this is die cut and embossed. This is for the November monthly card. So this is the little fox for this card right here. If you have this one, um, then it would be good. So Laura said, I can be gross. You can lick your finger and run it along the side. Yep, <laughs> you could. You very well could, yep. You could take it, but yep, that would work. <laughs> All right, so stamps, you guys. In your kit, you guys, also, I put, I only have like six little things, or hi, Angela, six or seven little of these guys. So you guys, I picked up a little bit and put them in each of your kits. So they are floating around in your envelope. <laughs> so back to work, Angela. Sounds like a good plan. <laughs> Gotta make the money, girl. Okay, so we discovered this in class last night that we don't even use this little tree on the side. We're only using these two trees. So don't ink up this tree at all. So when you put this on your ink pad, ink up, ink up just those two trees and they're getting stamped near the bottom edge here. Yeah, this card isn't hard, really. The hardest part about this is this part right here. I'm gonna show you how I assembled this. DNA on your card. Yes, you're right. Do you, you know, every time you guys lick the envelope, we were, we're leaving DNA, right? <laughs> so um, the largest white piece is for the back, you guys. So this card, there was not a lot of room for writing a sentiment. Your love note. If you don't want to write a love note and you just want to sign your name, use that white piece for something else, you guys. I will never know unless you send me the card in the mail. <laughs> so, so this is going to go down here. And again, because we didn't stamp that, we don't have to worry about masking it or covering it up. Okay. So that's there. And then this part here, though, I need a scrap here. So again, just the two trees. And we're going to stamp. You can see the card here. We're going to stamp these two over here. And then we're gonna ink up again. I use the sanding blocks they use to sell and get rid of the freight paper. Yep, <laughs> Brenda, that's what people are saying. They had sanding blocks. Okay, so then now this one goes right here. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Hold up, wait a minute. We're gonna stamp our sentiment first because I don't wanna put the tree where my sentiment needs to go. So you guys, I learned with my wishing you the best. If I stamp this per the saying, it is really crooked. Look at that, look how crooked that is. So I've learned with this stamp, I have to cockeye it up a bunch and then it stamps it straight. That's what I learned about this stamp. So I'm gonna cockeye up to the, <laughs> the right, I don't know, right or left, whatever I said, and stamp my sentiment, okay? That's what I learned about this. And now, you guys, you use the nail blocks from Walmart for sanding paper, there you go, that works too. Okay, now I'm gonna stamp my last trees here. So I was so worried that if I stamp them up too high, I wouldn't have room for my sentiment. But there you go. You've got your tree 
tree action going on here. Okay. So we've got sentiment here, a sentiment here, and then we've got the back for your love note to write a book back here for somebody. Okay. That's what that's for. So what do we want to do next? We want to get glue happy again. So we're going to flip the white papers over. We can get them prepped and ready to go. And a little glue on all of these. Okay. This one is the stitched rectangle. It goes on the stitched rectangle like that. This one we just talked about is for our back. So flip over the card and put it on the back. Now I did that. You know, I don't generally ever glue a mat on the back, you guys, but <laughs> we needed a spot to write our notes. And then this guy is for on here. Right there, that should fit really nicely on the gray. Okay, now to the grand finale. How do you put these together? Because ultimately you're creating a sandwich with these two, but you don't know where they're gonna go on here. So what I advised everybody in class last night is to set this down. It's gonna kinda, so you see a row of trees and a row of trees, figure out where you want it. And you're gonna just center this left to right. And then however you want it. Make sure, try to get it straight <laughs> if you can. That's always a good thing. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is put some adhesive on the side here and the side here. If you want to put a little through the middle, you can. Okay, so what we wanna do is making sure our arms are all straight and lined up. Get this guy where you want it. Straight, good. Okay, now you're gonna plop your silver metallic piece down. Now, because I use glue, I've got some wiggle room. I can get this where I want it. So I'm trying to line it up with my basic gray as best I can and making sure that that's kind of centered good. Guys, you got a little wiggle room if you use glue, okay? So when you got it where you want it, press it down, good. Okay, and then this is last but not least. Pop it up or glue it flat. Um, I popped it up, so go ahead and pop. And they're right here, let's use up some of these end pieces. So, put that here. Get rid of that long line right there. And then, oh, get off of there. Okay. And then that's going to go right over the top. That's how I, the easiest way I found to make that. I don't think I originally made it like that when I put mine together, but that's what made sense in my head. Then this will go right over the top that. So now when you flip this up, you've masked. So like this was Diane's card and we talked about this. Diane and I did. She said, oh, I wish I would have hidden that. So now it's hidden. You don't see that white line there. So just a little upgrade, a minor upgrade. And then we added, we talked about it. We added that. And then, hi, Melanie. And then just changed up the DSPs. Oh, my glue is not dry. Ha. Huh? <laughs> oh, you guys, hang on. We got to get you pickled on here. Okay. Dry. Then some sequins, you guys. How I put the sequins on. Oh, let's Stella. You guys, this is what I would Stella on this one. Stella your basic gray border. Get some sparkle on that. And then Stella can't say she was out on a hot date all night. We used her a little bit. Okay. And then how I would do the liquid glue and my, my sequins. Uh, I'm glad you like it, Kay. Um, so I put sequins on the top of all the trees. <laughs> my little glue is going to not. Okay, little dots of liquid glue. If you use mini glue dots, you guys, they're going to be bigger than the sequins. And I put one there. And I have one up here and one there. I gave you guys a little pinch of sequins. It should have been at least five or six or seven. I didn't count them all, but I take my pick tool now and it's good. I use both ends actually. I use the pokey end to kind of press it in and then I use the putty end to, to pick up the sequin. 
So I stick it on there and then hold it down with my nail and then I kind of push down. And there's small ones and big ones. And so I liked having a small one on that little tree. Very elegant, you're very right, <laughs> you're very correct. So we're gonna put a little guy there. The silvers and the gray are so pretty together. All right, there's one. And you guys, I still have a couple glue dots left, or not, you know, not glue dots per se, but dots of glue. Um, there's a thing on there, get off of there. Sometimes you gotta be careful with the glue because like now that one just came up, my finger grabbed it and brought it up. So stick it right back down there. Your second favorite is this one, good. All right, um, we'll grab that guy and put him over there. So I just added, if you guys wanna add diamonds, you can. So like Diane put rhinestones on the tops of her trees and that works too, that's pretty. Just adding a little bit of sparkly shimmer so you can see the embossing folder is so cool. So pretty. Uh, I definitely agree, Su I agree Susan. <laughs> that was hard to say. Oh, I, I, you know, I get told that a lot, that I make things look a little bit e too easy. <laughs> so I've been doing this for over 20 years, you guys. <laughs> so I do kind of have that tendency to make it look easy. That's just because it's like it's second nature, you guys. I, I stamp in my sleep, I think. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, all right. We're gonna pull in all the cards so you guys can see all, like this one's really hard to, but I like that side a lot. I think I would pick that side of that one. And our easel card here, not easel, our bay window card here, okay. Cindy likes, oh, I like that you like watching me. That's awesome. <laughs> all right, so you guys, these were, these were all of them. So it was quite the assortment of fun folds, you guys, <laughs> so. You're very welcome. Randy loves all of them. I thought it was embossed with embossing powder first. No, just ran through the embossing folder. Oh, that's it for that silver. So you guys, that's what I've got for the fun folds for tonight. Oh man. So Dev Norman loves them all. Woohoo! So you guys love fun folds so much that I built out my skeleton calendar for next year, the entire year. You guys, I love to plan. If you don't know that about me, I love to plan. I love to plan very far out too. So I put all together my whole skeleton calendar for next year in terms of not, not knowing what sets I'm going to use, right? Because I don't know that yet. But in terms of my bundle classes or my uh, um, monthly classes, my ink, paper, scissors, celebration classes, and then fun folds. You guys love fun folds. So there are going to be three fun folds classes next year. <laughs> so I think I've got them slated for March, October, and sometime in the summer. So yes, you'll know it. So, and I always keep my eyes open when I get fun folds that I like that are duplicatable. So you guys, it's really hard when I get a fun fold and I have all, there's all these crazy score lines and diagonals and zigzaggies. And it's like, ah, uh, how am I going to like prep 74 kits like this because I end up doing all of your scoring and cuttings to make it super easy for you guys to get your cards. Basically, all you have to do is stamp and assemble, like very little anything else. So it's a lot of prep work and mentally preparing myself already for the next Fun Folds class. So, um, but yeah, so, and it's always good, you guys, to sign up as soon as you are even remotely thinking about doing a class, you should get your name on my class list because if you forget about it, then I feel bad and then you might miss it. So it's always easier to add your name and then take you off than it is to not put your name on and then miss it. So yeah. Um, okay. So I think I forgot to mention about Kelly's Technique Thursday this morning. So Kelly did a Technique Thursday, guys, and she talked about the mirror stamping technique. And, oh, you do all of this. So many kids playing. Yes, so much planning. Yes, you're right. I don't do it all by myself, you guys. I can't take credit for this. I have a great support team of helpers, and my mom is phenomenal. And even my dad, you guys, will come in here sometimes and cut ribbon for me and cut the, like the embellishments apart for when I do my product shares. So my dad sits here and sorts paper. So... <laughs> 
and we tease him a little bit. So he, he's got a birthday next month. My dad is going to be, he was born in 51. He, my dad's going to be 70. Is that right? No, can't be. No, my mom was born in 51. So my mom just turned 70. So my dad's 74. And so we tease him a little bit. So <laughs> yeah, he's going to quit his farming job to come help me. So anyways, so um, you're very welcome, everybody. I know you guys are coming in and commenting a lot. So I'm trying to catch them as I'm talking. So um, yeah, you guys, fun folds are hard to put together by using just the PDF tutorial. That's why it's really, I really encourage watching these videos for the fun folds because to see me put them together makes a whole difference. Um, oh, Barbara, you're the same age as my mom. And my mom turned uh, 70 on June 29th this past year. So, and a lots of you guys sent her birthday cards. So that was awesome. Yes, I have wonderful parents. I'm very, very fortunate. So, um, okay. You guys, I think we talked a lot about everything. It's um, We kept this down to two hours and 10 minutes. So that's pretty exciting for me. Um, I remember when I did my first Fun Folds class um, last June, um, it was in I mean, my first Fun Folds online class. I did it from my back bedroom, you guys. It was before the hive was set up. And um, uh, it, it took like three hours, I think. <laughs> Oh, I was so thirsty and I had to go pee so bad when I was done. Oh, so not, I got, I was good tonight. So it was really good. So, all right, you guys. So we're going to announce who the winners of these other cards are. And so how you guys get in on the drawing for um, winning class cards from me is you have to comment or share. That's how I know. If you guys just like things, I don't always see the, like who likes what, but if I see comments, then I can get your names in for the drawing. If I see that you share, I can get your names in for the drawings. Um, so Hilda Nell, I see your note here that you want to do the December Mary snowflakes. So I will write your name on the class list for that and we'll figure out the rest later. You guys, as long as I get your name on the class list, I don't care. Like as long as you pay me before the class, before I ship, or if you place your order before they ship, that's all that matters. So, all right. So, um, so there we go. So I've got Hilda and all signed up. Um, all right. So I'm going to flip the camera down you guys. And I have these. So this was the monthly class from October 14th. These, we did a Halloween, uh, Thanksgiving ish, and then a Christmas card. So, all right, drum roll guys, do it with me. Brrr. Okay, winner, winner, chicken dinners. Naughty Nancy, <laughs> you were drawn for this one. Naughty Nancy, I will see you at class tomorrow night and you will get this beautiful card. <laughs> so thank you so much, Naughty Nancy, for your support always. Um, Mo, you're very welcome. You'll assemble during the replay. Perfect, you're still on vacation mode. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. All right, drum roll. Mary Ostrich, you are the lucky winner of this Thanksgiving card. Very nice. I have yours. <laughs> Brenda says chicken dinner. Da -da -da -da. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Linda Davis, I don't know if I have your address. If you'd like me to mail you this card, I just need you to private message me your address so I can pop it in the mail. All right, so that was for these three. All right. Now, for the cutest Halloween was last week. Um, four winners. Da -da -da -da. This cutie patootie card with the cat. My mom loved it with the little cat, gray cat. Frankie Canada, you were the lucky winner of this card. Congratulations. Da -da -da -da. The pretty pink one with the flirty flamingo. You put a smile on my face. Happy Halloween to you. You guys, it was incredible. I had eight kits to start with at the class starting last week. And by Sunday, all eight were gone. Heather Brenner. You're the lucky winner of this card. Thank you so much for your support. Um, it was amazing, you guys, how fast these went. I never thought I'd have all eight of them gone so fast, but they did. They went like hotcakes is what they say. All right, our Bo Diddley here. Hey, boo, have a fab boo this Halloween. Da -da -da! Winner, 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 chicken dinner. Stacy Burns, your name was drawn for this one, lucky girl. All right. And I think you might be watching. I know where to send that one to. And you guys, I love, love, love this little part right here on this card. It's so my favorite. Okay, have a fabulous Halloween with our little skull heads here. Last but certainly not least, it is Denise Gillen. Um, it's G-U-I-L-L-E-N. But Denise, I don't have your address. So if you'd like me to mail you this pretty card, you'll have to send me your address privately so I can send it. Hi, Francie Freeberg. 
All right. Oh, hey, boo, sold that card set. Yeah, the hey, boo. Hey, boo. I love the purple, you guys. These, I love this class. They're, there aren't many classes that I just always love looking at, but I love the bright cheerfulness of and how cute these Halloween cards were. I just love them. I really didn't want this class to ever end because I wanted these to stay up on my board forever. <laughs> so, all right, so we got these four lucky winners and we have these three lucky winners. You guys, this is my current host code. If you need to place an order for anything that I showed you tonight, just remember, if you either hit the $35 or $40 mark, that gets a class. If you're not sure what, always go to cardsbycrispy.com and check out my events calendar. And what I mean by that, and maybe sometimes it's good to show this, you guys. I'm sorry, I got my phone charged in here. But I, what, I, what I mean by going to my calendar of events is you go to cardsbycrispy.com and there's a calendar. It's a literal calendar. And like tonight was fun folds. So let's go to in two weeks in December, the 9th. Oh, we're in November. Sorry. If we go to, oh, I have to tell you guys a side note on November 11th, just to prep you, I will not be live in the hive um, with you. I will be live in the hive with my team because it's on stage and we're getting recognition um, and our first kickoff event for on stage. So you guys, the Facebook Live will actually be on the 12th of November, okay? And then when you go into it, um, what you need to look for is this information right here where it says what you need to do to pay for it or to receive it free and by the date. So you guys, that was in cardsbycrispy.com and you click on my events. That's where you can find that. And then if you look for the host code, it's always right there underneath that picture of me. Okay, so I just wanted to share that with you guys in case anybody is ever wondering. So, all right, I think that I kept you guys long enough tonight <laughs> and I need to go pee. I'll be honest with you, I gotta run to the bathroom. I drank a whole little bottle, like not a little bit, I drank one of those bottles of water right before I went live. I'm like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have done that. But you know how that goes, it's too late once you get started. So, all right, so if you guys ever have questions or need help with anything, the best thing to always do is ask me. It does not hurt to ask me at all. I don't mind helping, I don't mind answering. And 10 people can ask me the same question and I, I, I hope that I'm as nice to the 10th person as I am to the first person. I try to be um, because everybody, if you have that question, then everybody else will probably have that question. So at some point they did. So it doesn't hurt to ask. So, all right, you guys, I'm here to help you if you need it. So, all right, on that note, what is next? Tip Tuesday will be Tuesday. Oh, I'm going to get on here sometime between now and Tuesday, and I'm going to show you all the cards that are coming up for November. So watch for that video. And that's where you guys can see everything, and I'll tell you specifics on the details for ordering versus is. Um, you are an awesome question answer. Yes, you are an awesome question answer. I think that's what you meant. <laughs> I got it. Um, I try. <laughs> so so I'll, chop, I'll hop on sometime this weekend, and we'll do a short little live of, oh, I have swap cards to share with you, too, from the retro swap. So that's what we'll do. I'll find a time that works for me, and I'll pop on unexpectedly, and you guys can catch the replay if you don't miss it, if you miss it live. So, all right. You're very welcome, everybody. Um, I'll talk to you guys later. Lots of sunshine, love, and hugs to you. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday and enjoy your weekends. Bye, everybody.